Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Are you happy that in the house of the Lord? Are you happy this afternoon? I feel like I'm very far. I'm very far. Can I come down? Oh, yes, please. So tell your neighbor today, you're going to come out a different person. By the end of this conference, I'm not going to be the same. So open up your mind, open up your heart, and expect from the Lord. You may have your seats. How many were here last time? How many were here last year? Lift up your hand better and better. In our church, if you're lifting, you do like this. So less than half. So the rest of you are new to me. So my name is Pastor Karo Kariuki. I pastor a church in Riruta called Living Faith Ministries. And today I came with a team. I came with another set of three. I came with the elder of elders. Kindly stand up. That is Elder Joe. Joe here. Appreciate him. Yes, that's how you appreciate people. That's how you do it. When someone stands and at his age, he needs to be appreciated to give him a bit of strength so that he can grow better. So he is our elder in the church. He's in charge of the church in general as much as I'm the pastor. He's the one who runs the operations of the ministry. And I also came with uh, my very own the child of my youth, there is Trina Karuki. Trina, stand up and wave. There is my daughter. She is Trina Karuki. Oh, yes, yes, yes. She's only four years. She's a keyboardist. She can play a piano. And she's a worshiper. So I bless God for her. So she's not here by chance, but I chose to come with her because I know in a few years she'll be joining you. Will you be here? No, you'll have graduated and gone and come now to where we are. And I also came with my very, very lovely husband. Oh yes, something of the sort. Yes. Kindly appreciate Elder Martin Karaoke as you call him here in D.C., Pastor Martin Karaoke. He is the priest I serve when I'm submitted to him. As much as I'm the pastor in charge of the church, he is my counselor. He speaks to me and he tells me I don't like that. As much as I'm the pastor, I have to do away with it. So thank you very much, my lovely husband. He has allowed me to come today. He allowed me when I was invited. I let him know that I had been invited again to Deliverance Church, Zimmerman. And he said, it is okay. You can go ahead. There are many people who would have wanted to come. Am I having a feedback? Or it's me hearing myself? Okay, I can't see the sound man today. So it is well, it is well. So it is okay. I can do it with the mic when I want because I'll be moving up and down. That is my habit. Uh, so in a nutshell, I was introducing myself. We are in Riruta, but I live in Gong. So I've come all the way from Kajiado. <laughs> Kajiado is only 20, how many kilometers from here? 16 to town, then from town here to here, this, how many kilometers? Eight? Yeah, 16 plus 8, 24, 25 kilometers, not very far. We do that often. We are always here. We were here a few weeks ago. Did you see us? Or you were all in school? 
Oh, you are here. How many weeks ago? Two weeks ago. And we're leaving this place at night. And actually remember uh, one of your sisters asking if we are going to spend here. And we laughed. I, I was like, how? Spend where? In Zimmerman? It's like spending in Karen. Because it's just here. So, but we are glad that we are here today. I'm so happy that I was invited. Because I don't take it for granted. Our church is a youthful church. 60% of the church is youth. 60% of the church is youth. So I'm in the right place, right? So I feel at home. So hamuniwezi? It's okay. If I have managed the 60%, I can manage you. Right? But I'm glad to see you that you love the Lord, that you are in the right place at such a time. You chose to come. Either you chose by yourself, it was voluntary. Either your parents told you you must go. Or the church said you must come. One thing I want to assure you is that you are in the right place. You'd rather be in the house of the Lord than anywhere else. I remember the days when I clear, uh, when we finished a term, I always found the, the fair and the place for me to go for camping. Now I understand why my mother used to do that. We knew after closing school, it's camp time. And I loved it. So wherever the camps were, in all nations or in Pefa, I used to be found there. And I thank God. Because that foundation has made me who I am today. I began serving the Lord at your age. Even younger. That's why I bring my daughter to church. I began serving the Lord when I was very, very young. And let me tell you, it is not a waste. You'd rather be there. You're going to be preserved. If you, God is looking for a people, then you'll be, you'll be in a place where he'll be able to pick you. You'll be in the right place. And Zimmerman for me is not new. This I'd not planned to say. Even your pastor Brian doesn't know that. It's not new to me. When I was young, I lived here. After in between college, when I just finished college, I lived here. And the other day, my brother reminded me and told me, Pastor Caro, you are preaching in Zimmerman. It is divine. Because when I was here, I needed the Lord. I was, I can't say I was lost, but I did not know myself. I did not have an identity. Yes, I would serve the Lord. But at times, I would lose it and find myself in the wrong company. I know Zimmerman. This one, I know it very well. Maybe your mothers are some of your friends. Your mothers are my friends. Or even I know your father. So when I come back to preach, I know because I used to cry and tell God, God, remember, I love to serve you. And no matter how far I run away from you, never let me go and never come back. So to me, as I speak to you, children, or the youth, I'm speaking to a people that I know God prepared me for you many years ago here in Zimmerman. And after I left Zimmerman and I got married, I used to come and spend some time just up here with, at uh, my brother's place. And we used to sleep uh, in his house. And we're remembering the other day, his house used to be very small. One bedroom house, but how we used to fit eight people and children, I don't understand. So that is how <laughs> the memories of Zimmerman. I also lived up here. It, there is a flat here. It is one of the oldest. It is painted in blue. It has blue lines. It's one of the oldest. And I used to stay there with a friend of mine. And later, God picked us out of this place. And I'm serving here and she's serving in faith evangelistic ministry. So Zimmerman has good memories. For me, it was a preparation ground. For me, it was a place of going through fire and God refining me and making me who I am today. For some of you, in years to come, you will be saying that. That thank God for this is Zimmerman because that was my place of making. Hallelujah. So last year, I went through a topic, it was still on media, and I was talking about music that 
corrupts. Yes, great. I can see. Music that corrupts. I'm still now on the same line, but today I want to talk about the temple and in relation to social media. Every one of you here has interacted with a phone, right? How many of us have interacted with a phone? I want a very engaging class. I want a very engaging class. Oh, so the rest of us, you have not engaged, you have never interacted with a phone. Hamja kutana na simu pahali. Hamja guza simu pahali. You know now today that I'm down here, when last time when I was here, up here, I was unable to come down and pinch some people. But now because I'm closer, I will pinch you. I have very nice nails. I'll do that. So how many of us have had a phone, have interacted with a phone? Maybe it's not yours, it's your parents, your brother, your sister. So 100%. So all of us, all of us. So you have been a partaker of social media. In Kenya, the Communication Authority of Kenya, in the year 2016 to 2017, they had said that it was 90% penetration of social media or a phone or social media in our country. So if there was over 90%, then the 90% are here, right? You are here. Social media is good. Especially in today, our country, we are more youths and we have more, we are more technically or tech obsessed. It is okay for you to pick your phone and read from your, the Bible from your phone than picking a hard copy of the Bible, right? Is that true? How many like it that way? You're reading from your phone. It is more interacting. How many like the hard copy? The hard copy. Yeah, how how na juana ni I know, I know, I know you have very good pastors who insist on hard copies. That's why they are they are doing like this. But I know that most of you look for materials in your phone. We hold smartphones and we like smartphones, and they are not bad. Social media is not bad. It is very good because it is out of that social media that I'm here. Otherwise, Pastor Brand didn't come to Gong to look for Pastor Caro so that Pastor Caro can come in and speak to us. No, he called me, he wrote me an email, we talked to one another that way, and it was possible for me to be here today. So it's not a bad thing. So it is because of social media that you're here. Did you advertise for this conference? You did. I saw it, I saw it, so that's why I've been following. Do you remember what your pastor preached, especially the bishop of, uh, of this, of Zimmerman? Can you remember what he preached on Sunday? You can remember. What was it? Pardon? Expectations? Pardon? God's time? At what time? Bishop preached at what time? Then he preached about expectation. <laughs> oh, at, you're asking at what time? Oh, he preached in all three services. So the, the youth service, the express one in the morning. Yeah, that's the express one, yeah? Yeah, can you remember express? You are not here? Where were you? You are asleep. These, were, these guys were asleep. Okay, you guys, where were you? You are preparing ourselves to come. Oh, you are not here. So can I talk about the afternoon one? Or the, the, the celebration? Yes. The celebration. What was he preaching about? Oh, yeah, because you guys have taken me to celebration. So what was it all about? Eh? Keep on. That is what I'm looking for. I knew. Keep on believing. I know. I know. Why? Because I followed. I follow your bishop. That is the goodness of social media. Yeah. Yeah. I love you, but I don't have to come here because I need, I'm needed to be in my church. But after that, I can check on you guys what you are. You have been taught. Yeah, keep on believing. Yes. Can you remember? No, we can remember. Yes. No, if you want to remember more, you still can go to your phone and follow him and check whether you have everything that he taught. Those are a lot. So you need to look for those points. So that is the effectiveness of social media. Social media is user-driven. You have to use it. If you want to talk to your friends, do you have to use your mom's account? How many of us use our mother's accounts on Facebook? Our brother's accounts on Facebook? You see, Pastor, you see that thing? Ah, yes, because you have to go to your 
own. Because it is user-driven, highly accessible platform. If you're not on Facebook, where are you? Instagram, where are you? Twitter, Snapchat, WhatsApp, right? Yes, all those, you are there. So I can see you have, you have really interacted with social media. So you use, what do you share? You share your thoughts, photos, videos, stories, links. To who? To who? To me? No, they have refused, not to me. So to who? To friends. So you select. So it is selective. You select who to talk to. After you have selected, then you allow them to interact with you. How many of us feel good when you send your friend a WhatsApp message and they take two days without replying? You feel bad, eh? Very bad. Guess what we are suffering from? Fear of missing out. We call it FOMO. F-O-M-O. FOMO. Have you heard of that word? Some have not heard. So today, people are suffering from FOMO, fear of missing out. That is why you cannot stay away from your phone for two days. But it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll see whether you need it or not. So we say there are positive and negative effects of social media. And everyone, when you're opening an, an account, whether Facebook, even Instagram, you have to open one. Even WhatsApp, you have to open one. What do you do when you're opening a Facebook account? What do you do, number one? Yes? You buy bundles. Good. So someone suffers. <laughs> someone is suffering. Number two? Number two? What do you do? Yes? Yeah? You switch on the, the phone. The data. After switching on the data, you open the app. Good, good. I'm heading there. The other thing, after opening the app, you sign in. After signing in, you can sign in if you don't have one, yes. What do you do after that? You create an account. You create a profile, right? You create a profile and you say, you say this is me. And you use all the names that you use, like what? Like, you use very funny names. What are the names? Huh? Yeah, all those, yes. All those you're mentioning, those ones. Then what do you do? You begin to connect with friends. You begin to connect with friends. You look for your mother's friend, right? Right? <laughs> so you look for who? Your best friend. Who could be your age mate? Must be your age mate, right? You can look for these guys. You can look for these guys. They, they, they're in their 40. They've, they've just hit 40. So you can look for them. Yeah, so you look for your age mate. So three things happen. You create a profile, right? You connect with friends, and then you do everything else you're saying. You share information. And in that sharing information, there's a lot that happens. So ask yourself these questions. What are you hoping to achieve when you open that account to begin to communicate? What are you hoping to achieve? What do you want to achieve? Pardon? Follow us. For what? To follow you, just to follow you without going anywhere. You know we need to follow people who are going somewhere. They like. They like you. Uh. Oh, they like my picture because it looks how beautiful. So I so good. So I put the very best photo. Then they can say, I like. But some of those photos, are they real? Hmm. No, you have done Photoshop. No, you have really done. You know you have done? Filters. Exactly. For for us ladies, we have to do filters because of times we have some. Sports. Yes. Right? So, who is responsible of that page? We are getting somewhere. Who is responsible? You. So, you are responsible. 
So what comes on, on your page, it's you who is responsible. We will find out whether it is you. You are still responsible of that page. So he talked about buying bundles. So the next thing you do, how much time can you afford to spend on social media? How much energy? Mm -hmm. How much money? How, much, how many hours do you spend a day? In a day? You are only supposed to spend in 24 hours only 30 minutes of your time on social media. Only 30. Only 30. 24 hours. In 24 hours, how many of us have managed to keep 30 minutes of their day on social media? If you're above that, oh, you, 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 you spend less. You spend more. You do, when you don't have money, good. Because when you don't have money, you will not spend. But assuming like him, you have money. So after this, we buy you one GB. Hey, how long will you spend? The whole day. Ah, yeah, the whole day. I will not go to eat. I will not go to church. I'll, actually, I will not even be found here. Maybe the reason why some of us are not here because I couldn't do away with their social media platform. Because the minute you're here, Pastor Brian, don't you have some rules? He has some rules. We are heading somewhere. So social media is good. But there is something that social media capitalizes on. What does it capitalize on? It capitalizes on, on vicious photos, videos. That's why you said you take a nice profile photo. And for you on WhatsApp, you even have, you keep on updating your status. So you have for today, for tomorrow, for the other day. So we know you. Like Jesus in four portraits. Jesus was different in Mark. He was different in Matthew. He was different in Luke. And he was different in John. So you start to behave like Jesus. Because today, you are the suffering son. Tomorrow, you are the son of God. The other day, you are the Messiah. Is that not what you do? Only Jesus can be that. You, you are supposed to remain constant. You are supposed to remain constant. But you keep on sending us those photos. Because of this one thing. Because social media is highly visual. That is why when there is an advert, that advert is not just an advert of words. What do they send in those adverts? What do they send? What kind of things? Videos? What kind of videos? No, you have gone quiet on me because you know. The kind, you know that you, you are saying, yes, I spent the whole day. No, you've gone quiet on me. Yeah. The pictures that are there, what kind of pictures? Even good and bad. I mean, I'm not saying they're all bad. Yeah, say the good one. Like what? Like hike. Yeah, like going for a hike. Like it's a guy. Pardon? Okay, Pastor Brian, you need to interpret for me. You know, this is Northland. No, this is Northland. We are in Westlands. So this is Northland. So the sharing is different. It's different. Yeah? It's an advertisement. The advertise is what? Ilara. Oh, milk. Only milk. But why are you making me feel like I don't take milk? I don't watch TV. I don't watch. You, why are you making me like look like I'm not informed? You guys. Oh, yes, I can see. Wow, great. So every time you see, there's a girl. There's a girl right there. So Social media has a way of making it very visual. You have to see. So whatever you see is very important. And that's why I want us to read Matthew chapter number 6 and verse 22. Matthew chapter number 6 and verse 22. Father, we bless you. We thank you because at this time, Lord, you will open our understanding. You will open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, Lord. We thank you because we are here to be transformed, to be changed, oh God. We are not going to leave this place the way we came. And we ask you, do something new in our lives today. Matthew 6, 22, the Bible says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. What did I say? The eye is the lamp of the body. That's why the eyes are here. So the eyes see, if your eyes are okay, the entire body is full of sight. And because you can see, you are able to know where you are stepping. 
because you can see Ilara advert, you are able to say to tell this is milk being advertised, and there is a small girl advertising milk together with her family. That one you saw. So you are able to know it is Ilara. And it's some of you like it, right? So you began taking Ilara because of that. So that's why we, the Bible is telling us that the light, the eye is a lamp of the body. I'm reading from Amplified. So that is when if your eye, if you can see, we have one guy in our church. You have seen him here before. We call him Deacon David. He's, uh, he's visually impaired. Rather, he's blind. He doesn't see. So when you're talking about Ilara and a good girl, he can't tell us about the good, the small young girl that is there. He can only say, I've only heard them advertising Ilara. But you, you can see, so you know it is Ilara. So what your eyes see got the ability to control your body. Whatever your eyes see got the ability to control your body. Right now, what are you looking at? Me. What colors do I have? Yes. Some are very keen. They're saying orange. And I'm sure these men here have not seen orange anywhere. But they are very keen. They have seen orange. They have seen orange. Even the ones that are far, they have seen orange. So as you're seated there, you are able to tell I'm dressing on pink. I have a pink dress. So when I live here, if I walk outside there, you will remember that was our speaker of the day. So I have begun to control you. That I was your speaker. I begin to speak to you. I was your speaker because of what you saw and what you heard. Besides the image, there is a voice that explains the intentions of the image that you see. Besides this image that is standing here, I'm using a voice so that I can explain why I am standing and the rest of us are seated. Is that not true? And after that, I trans you translate that into an action, I'm preaching, and then we translate that into a habit. Whatever we hear, we begin to do. What happens when you sit down to watch a movie or a clip? Your brain starts changing according to the images you see and the emotions you feel. I want a demonstration, illustration here. You talked about Ilara. Right? Can I get someone illustrating like that girl and a father and a mother? There are those three people there. There's a brother and there's a brother. Yes. So the girl does what? Ona. Ona Kuja. She's a girl. She's a girl. Steve. Steve is the father. Godi. Godi. Godi and Joanne. Kujeni. They are betraying you. And Pinky. And Pinky. Kujeni. Come. You know, I have time. I can see my timer. I can see my timer. And I want us to go all the way. So I want her. Godi. Godi. Pinky. Is she dressed in pink? Joanne, is Pinky dressed in pink? No. Joanne, come. Kindly come, kindly come. She is a girl. She is a girl. Come, come, yes, come. I shall charge you for these hours, eh? That we are wasting anyway. No, just come, just come. So I want you to I want you to behave like that girl. I, don't, I have not seen ad the advert many times, so I can't remember. So I want you to, where is the father? It's you. So, can I just speak? Come. Come, I demonstrate with you. Come, come, come. When the pastor says you come, you come. Eh? You be obedient. Otherwise, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you about familiarity right now. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, forget about the small brother. Okay, let's do it. Huja yona di advert. Haja yona. Is she lying to us? She can't be lying in church. Okay, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. We need the small brother. 
Phineas, come. Come, in specs. Come, come, come. Come, my brother. Come, come. And I will ask you questions after they do this. This is a good class. It's good to teach the young. You know, the, the old people would be asking, Pastor, preach. Pastor, preach. Pastor, preach. We came here so that you can hear the word. The word of the Lord. What the Bible is saying. But here we must do illustrations. Because we are people that see and hear. That is what we depend on. We are a generation of seeing and hearing. Are you done with seeing? You see, they have to see. Pastor, you see, they have to see. So that they can translate that. So that their brain can change right now. And I will ask you questions. Be very keen. Be very, the rest of us, be very keen. I'm going to ask you questions. And I wish I had some rewards. In our church, we normally have rewards. But today, I'll, I'll have water. Don't worry, I have water. <laughs> I give them the mic. You're done? for your obedience. Thank you for illustrating. Now I want to ask you a question. Uh, that is Godi. Godi was dressed in hot color. Red. Um, she was dressed, the, the, the small girl was dressed in which color? Blue. Green. And our small Phineas was dressed in? Maroon. With stripes of red. What specific thing did Godi do? There's something that he did. He okay. Tell us. Took off his shoes, went up the chair and danced. Great. So you agree to that? That he took off his shoes, he stepped on the chair, and he danced, and at one point, was that Ilara, the porch? So he put it aside. So all of us were able to see that, right? So all of us, can we say all of us were able to see that? So we were able to see, and right now, your brains have formed. You saw red, you can remember, you've seen the stripes of maroon, and you have seen green. I still can remember how Godi was dancing, funny, right? Doing like this. So that, that, what happened, your brain began to change. According to the images you saw, and the emotions you felt. You clapped for them. Why? Because they danced. If they were mourning, if they were crying, you would have cried with them. So everything you, you see and you watch has a way of changing your brain. Your brain is wired in such a way that, that when you see something, it begins to be, to resonate. It begins to be, it is, stored, it is stored in your brain. And it begins to look for another similar information that is in your brain. We talked about the process of filing last year. I don't want to go there. How the brain files the information. I don't want to go to the scientific or uh, way of storing information. But I want to tell you that now maybe at this particular time, you need to think of what you are watching and what you are hearing. Because it is, has a way of changing you. What goes into the inside of you eventually will show up on the outside. Did you know that? What goes into the inside of you will eventually show up. For instance, because in this church I know you are taught. If a girl becomes pregnant and she doesn't do whatever the world people are doing by, abort by aborting that baby, what will happen? 
the baby eventually will be seen. Did that baby get there through osmosis? Did, were they, uh, there was a girl walking, passing by a brother, and then she got expectant? No. Something went onto the inside of her. Right? Yeah, no, you started looking down. Went inside of her skin by skin. That's what we say. <laughs> yes. Skin by skin. That's what happened. Then eventually, after two months, something begins to happen. Three months, something begins to happen. And eventually, after nine months, she has to bring out something that went inside of her. The same thing. When you watch something good, we will know after seeing the fruits of what, after seeing the fruits of what has been coming out of you after four years, four years in school. After you have cleared school, you will get a certain grade. You go to campus. After you have cleared your many years, or four or six, depending on which course, we will know what you have been doing by the grade that you get. That is if you're in this era and age. If you came during Matiangi's time, and now Amina, maybe we are going to, to know how Amina is, Amina Mohammed. But if you are there before, we really can't trust your grades because you don't know whether you stole <laughs> or they were real. But in case you passed well during Matiangi's time, you are a sharp guy. Now, like you, eh? Like you. So after four years, we will see the fruits of the work that you have been doing because every labor has to give something up and that is the fruit. So what you have been watching on that social media, when you open your WhatsApp account, remember we say there is an intention of you opening that account. There is an intention of you opening a Facebook account. So whatever you have been watching, we will know it with time. You don't have to tell us, but we will know by the kind of a person you have become. Is that not true? You will know it. If you have become a very prayerful person, then your mother or your brother or your pastor will begin to say, ask you, have you been watching some prayer videos on your WhatsApp or on your Facebook? Has someone been sending you some good materials? So they will know that not besides church, you have become prayerful because you are reading prayer materials. What about it's the opposite? What about if you've been reading and you've been watching pornography? What will be the result of pornography? Fornication, right? Adultery, pardon? Incest, all those things. Those things, the issues of fornication, adultery, sexual immolarity does not happen in a day. It is a thought process. So whatever you have been thinking and whatever you have been watching is what we will see. But today my interest is, so God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he created him, male and female, female he, he created them. Genesis 1.27 if then we are made in the image of God, we must protect our bodies. Why? Because we are the temples. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you see must be in line with the rules of the temple. Whatever you hear must be in the rule according to the rules of the temple. Right now, in this sanctuary, this is a sanctuary, we can call it a temple. There are few things that you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to be chewing when you're in this temple, right? You're not supposed to be sleeping when you're in this temple. You're not supposed to be running around when you're in this temple. Those are the rules. So it's the same as your body. There are things that you're not supposed to permeate or to give access to. Your body. Because the Bible says that God created us in his very own image. And his image must look like God. So I want to ask you, does your image, do you look like God? Do you look like God? Then do you do things like God? Do you hear things that you have no problem that if God had, he would be giving you a high five? Like this. Yes, exactly. They said, hey, it's because... When you are alone, there are things that you watch. There are things that you listen to. And are not, they are not 
godly. Yet the Bible is saying that you have been created in his very own image. What he has done to you, he has given you a body as a custodian. For what? Because God wants to use human beings here on earth. Here as is in heaven. So he said, my image in heaven shall I bring here on earth. Are you getting me? My image in heaven shall I bring here on earth. So when I look at you, I see God. Because he created you and fashioned you in his very, very own image. For what purpose? For many, many different purposes. But all to glorify his name. Hallelujah. So that body, that, the eyes that you're using the mouth that you're using, the nose that you're using, the hand and the ears that you're using are created for God and for his purpose and his purpose alone. So anything that comes in ought to please God. Anything that you take with your mouth ought to please God. Anything that you look at ought to be pleasing unto the eyes of God. Hallelujah. But the church of today has concentrated on the soul and the spirit. But today we, call, we came to concentrate on the body. Hallelujah. You have heard of something like Greek philosophers or philosopher. You have heard. Great. So I'm not going to speak something new. There are some Greek philo philosophers who concentrated. She was lying. Because <laughs> she, she laughed now. I tetered you that time. No, I can't tetear you. <laughs> I can't tell you. I tell you. Now, there are those guys who believed that the soul, the spirit is good to be protected. When you get saved, it is your spirit, it is your soul that gets saved. But your body does not get, that's what, we, well, that's what we do. Your body does not get saved. So they had a habit of misusing this body. So they didn't care. As long as I am born again, I can sleep with any girl I want in church. As long as I am born again, I can sleep with any man I want in church. I can even take anything I want. That was false doctrine. And that doctrine has found itself today in the church. That you are saying, as long as I went to church, I am okay. What I do with my body is my very own business. Can I tell you, your body is not your very own business. It is made in the image of God. So we ought to practice or we ought to take care, better care of, of our bodies in order to honor God as he created you to honor him. How many feel that for sure my body honors God by what I eat, what I drink, what I hear, and what I see? Good. Good. If you do not have the courage to lift up your hand, I'm speaking to the right people. Christians, did you know that Christians should pursue good eating habits? Or rather, healthy eating habits. Did you know that? You should exercise always and avoid harmful substances. When we are told, do not take a lot of uh, sodas. What implications do sodas have in your body? Ga gas? Okay, that one is good. Yeah, gas. Because you'll keep on spoiling our air, even here. <laughs> they have gas that ca comes, in, comes out of your mouth and comes out of every time. And every time we are here, we have to, <laughs> we have to, to, tell, to, to, to send the pastor to the bishop. Just, uh, just ask the bishop if he can make more windows. It is not the windows that have a problem. There are many. It is because of what you are eating. It's because what of what is going inside of your body. Please do not misuse your body. That is ought to be our practice as Christians. But I have a better reason why you should be taking care of your body. I want someone to give me 1 Corinthians. Can I get it on the screen? Chapter number 6 and verse number 19. The Bible says, Oh, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have? from God and you're not your own. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you whom you have from God and you're not your own. The first thing that you ought to know is that your body belongs to God. 
This body that you have is not your property. It belongs to who? Able look at that hand. Look at your hand. That hand belongs to God. To do what? To do God's work. Touch your head. That head belongs to God. To do what? To think of good things acceptable before God. It is not yours. He created your body and he expects you to use it in a way or in a manner that pleases him. You know, we are, we are rebels naturally. We are rebels naturally. Ata mtoto akizaliwa. Si, akiambiwa anyonya nasema, ah, right? Akikuakuka, akikuakua anaitu anasema, what do they do? You call, mami, baba, come. They run away. Because naturally we are created as rebels. So you start saying, this body is mine. I can do anything I want with this body. Haven't you heard your friends say that? I can do anything I want with this body. But I came to remind you, that body is not yours. The Bible says the body is not meant for sexual immorality. The same chapter, 1 Corinthians 6, 13. But for the Lord and the Lord for the body. The body for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So before you watch anything that your heart is telling you is not right, ask God, can this please you? Because my body is for you. And the Lord for your body. For what purpose? For your use. Before, and I'm not against piercing. I'm not against piercing. I have. I have, I have pierced my ears. I have no problem. But I want to ask you. Before you went to pierce your what? Kitovu. And your how many? Uh, tongue. Have you seen people with tongue? Maybe you, are, you did that. Don't worry. We shall take, it, take care of it right here. Before you go to put a tattoo on your body, do you ever ask, God, are you pleased with this tattoo that I'm about to put? Are you pleased with this pin that I'm about to put? And for who? When you put your, your kipini kwa kitovu, whom are you pleasing? Who is seeing? Because right now I can't see anybody. So what is the intention? That's why I said whatever you do has an intention and has an audience. So when you put that, who is your audience? When you give me a kipini on your tongue, what, what I do you want to achieve? You must ask God. And God's body, which is your body, it is not for misuse because it is not your property. This body does not belong to you, Kijana. Before, you do anything in the morning. Ask God, what do you want to do with my body today? Is that not true? You tell God, God, today I want this body to please you. Why should the body that you have be pleasing God? Because he says it is not yours. It belongs to him. Number two, then why your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? It is because he paid for your body. Did you know he paid for your body? That body is paid for. That body is paid for. It was not a mistake that your father and mother kalongo kalongo and you came out. Hmm? <laughs> eh? No, it was not through osmosis. No, 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 no. no. Christ Jesus paid for that body and he knew he wanted that body for his own use. Do you know that? You are bought with a price. You have a price tag on you. You have a price tag. 1 Corinthians 6.20 tells us that our bodies have been bought. And God has never made anybody that he did not like. Do you like your body? Do you like your body? How many of us feel like they need to lose a bit of weight? Be honest or add. At your age is add. I was there. I was crying to add. Now I'm crying to lose. I don't know why, why these things happen. How many of us would want to add or maybe remove something? Oh, nobody. We are good. Like, you want to what? Add. Hey, you look like adding. You can't, you, you can't, you, you can't reduce. You want to do what? Add. It will come. 
Don't worry. You see this elders here? Can you see the elder of elders? Elder of elders. See mama Finis Akuone. Finis. Can you see elder of elders? He was slimmer than you. You never knew where he was going, whether he was going or coming. <laughs> you never knew whether he was going or Akisimama. Actually, people used to ask him, do you understand Kikuyu? Eh? It is true. It's a true story. I've seen him. I've seen him. So don't worry. But you cannot die asking God, oh, I want more weight. I want more weight. Maybe why you are that short is for a purpose. And you are that tall is for a purpose. I went for a conference a week ago. And uh, there was a socket up there. And the, the sound man or the person taking care of the sanctuary wanted to switch it on. But he was wondering how to do it because everybody was inside and the preacher was preaching. He was wondering, do I stack the chairs? Do I go and get the ngazi? What is going to happen? He just looked around. He saw one of the pastors. The guy was tall. He just went and told him. When the guy stood, I said, wow, wow, wow. Do we, we have tall people like that? I don't even think he should, can be found. Even in the museum. <laughs> nine feet. No, no, no. Number nine. Do you have people put on shoe number nine here? Yeah. Number ten? Yeah. Steve O. Yeah. Number ten. Steve O. Number ten. Number ten. See only? You know, you know, you can want to reduce. You see how well you see Kenya. Where is after Kia to your Kenya? Number nine. Who to honor? Your Kenya, who to honor? Eh? Oh, 10. Let me go to 10. Because 9 was found. True. 9 was found. 10. Kiatu ya Kenya number 10 ni kubwa sana. Maybe there is somebody. But that guy was so tall. He touched the, uh, he touched the socket and I said, wah, wah, wah. I appreciate every gift God has given in his church. I appreciated that tall guy because I was worried of the short guy. Because he looked at his bishop. The bishop was so mad that the sanctuary was dark. But now the short guy do not have a choice than to approach the tallest guy. And maybe where the tallest guy was in the church was to save this uh, uh, short guy from losing his job. So your bod body has been made perfectly. Perfectly. Have I told you that? Perfectly. So take care of it, but you have been made perfectly. I do not want young people and I do not want young girls to stop eating because you want to fit in a dress size number eight. Yes. Preach it. You, I have a church. Please don't. As long as you are taking care of your body. Because it is the temple. Maybe God wants you that big. So that because big people have very good voices. You know why? Because their diaphragm is bigger. I think I should teach the church of the small people. Yeah? These ones are getting it. Now. The, your size is great. No man, no man, young girls, should ever tell you, mm, if you just lost your weight, tell him, I will add. Tell him, actually, I am going to add. Because I was bought with a price just the way I am. It was expensive. It costed Jesus on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood for me. Just as I am. I know I am dark. I know I am light. But made right. The right size. The right face. Yes. Yes. Protect that investment. You are an investment. Protect it. It costed God, his son. Can you equate a human being with financial, uh, with money? No. It is priceless. So that price was too high for you. So you are an investment. Tell your neighbor, I am an investment. Am an investment. When you look at me, I cost something at stock exchange right now. Yes, I am I, I'm worth of something. I am worth of something. Because some of you have cars, right? Some of you are driving, right? You're, what are you saying? I thought you take it by faith. Yes, yeah, some of you are driving. Hallelujah. It's okay. You, at least you are closer. It's okay. Yes. 
Yes. Now, that car, I understand there are cars that you put diesel and there are cars that you put petrol. You buy a very good car and you put it, it's petrol only. You've seen imendi kwa pale kwa lead. Petrol only. Now, with your right mind, with your money in the pocket, it was not borrowed, would you go to a petrol station and say, don't put petrol, put diesel. You insist. Eh? Put diesel. Would you say, you do do that? You would never do that. Why? Why would you never do that? Because it was an investment, it cost you, and you do not want your investment to die right there. That is the same thing. Never put diesel in your body if your body is wired for petrol. Never put unrighteousness in your body because your body is supposed to be a holy temple. Never put a cigarette, never put a substance, never put any sexual immorality or anything that does not please God into your body. Why? It is an investment and when the owner of the investment will come, will ask you, how well have you taken care of my body? Because we said it is not your own. So the way you dress in the morning will tell us what kind of an investment you're protecting? Right? Yes, even when you're not coming for the camp. Here it is okay. Here everything is okay. Let's not talk about when we are out of here and nobody is watching us. When you wake up in the morning, it is a Saturday afternoon. It is a Friday evening and you're going to see your girlfriend. You're going to see your classmates. What dress and what trouser do you put on? There are some dresses there is a way you dress and we can tell you have no worth investment to protect. But the way you dress, if you dress modestly and you dress well, we can tell you have a worth, you have an investment that you are, guide, you are guarding and you have an investment that you are protecting. Hallelujah. So your body is an investment. Here, there are billions in your body. Here there are millions in your body. There is gold, there is silver, there is diamond out of your body. Because in your body, God has put a brain. That brain worketh when you are straight. And it gives you wisdom. You, God gives you wisdom. And with that wisdom, you are able to work out your brain. And you are able to know, now I am going to develop this app. And this app is going to be used in the youth in, our, in, the, uh, in the youth group in our church. When you click that app, it's going to give you a verse for the day. You can only react like that if you have protected your investment very well. Are we going to protect our investment? Because it has been paid with a price. The other thing is the spirit of God lives within in your body. Within your body. Did you know that? His spirit. Because the Bible says that do you, don't you know that the, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives within you. So this body that you have, God has gone ahead and put his spirit within you. So that now you can be able to and you can begin to behave like God. And you can behave like him. I want to read 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple, if anyone there is a condition, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Do you want to be destroyed by God? Protect his investment. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. You are the temple. I'm even going to talk about rest. Rest. If you don't give your body enough rest, you are abusing your body. Did you know that? Yes, that's why, how many hours should you, should you be sleeping? Eight. The doctor has prescribed that you should be sleeping eight hours. The doctor. Okay, your doctor. I don't know because my, my age is different. I can do six. You guys can do eight. Eight hours per day. It was good during the day God created. At night, he had a time to rest. And he had even his Sabbath day. That means rest. So there is a time 
to rest. He created day and night. And night was supposed to be for rest. If you work at night, it's okay. You will rest during the day. But what am I talking about? That rest is important. That rest you are going to rest. Because this rest, you are going to put your phone away. How many are willing to take our phones away? So that we can have, give our bodies rest. What's up away? You can, yeah? For how many hours? 24 hours. Appreciate him. He can do without a phone for 24 hours. So that he can give his body a rest. That is what you're going to do from today. You're going to say the temple of God requires rest. The temple of God requires rest. This body is not mine. It requires rest. The owner is saying, I need to rest. So you're going to rest. Are we in agreement? Are we in agreement? The other thing, God expects us to take care of our body. Do you take your, care of your body very well? How? How do you take care of our bodies? Pardon? Yes. Eating. Eating healthy. Yes. Showering. Ha, hallelujah. You are right. Showering. Showering. Girls can talk about showering. Yes. Men, are we there? Eh? We are there. Eh? We are okay. We are taking care of it. Even when nobody is seeing. Even when nobody has entered your bedroom. Even when, no, when nobody has checked your bathroom. And checking whether there was water that ever appeared. <laughs> you know, I have a son. I also have a son who is 10, year, 10, year, 10 years old. And when it comes to his time of showering, I call. I ask, has he gone to shower? Then I hear the house help or the house assistant say, Travis, mommy is saying you go shower. And me, on, he's not near. I shout on phone. Tell him to shower, not for less than five minutes. Otherwise, I'll take him back. That is how bad we, we want you to shower. We want the men to shower. Eh? My son goes for every minute. Zikisha, akio kwa bathroom. Sabuni likuwe meanguka. Kitambai likuwe metopote. Au maji. Haikuwa mo. Moto saa likuwa nafanya. Shh. Shh. Don't worry. You need to take care of that body. That's why we don't pierce everywhere. Remember what we said. You don't do your body piercing everywhere. There are some things. That you need to know. When it is enough. Even your ears. You need to know when it is enough. Because this is a temple. This is not yours. This body is not yours. It has been bought with a price. It belongs to God. And the spirit of God lives within that body. So how many, how many holes can you have? And how many earrings can you hold in one ear? Ten? One. One is good. So the men are saying one. Do we go by that? No. Okay, how many? How many? Let me ask you. Five, for what purpose and for what intention? Because I'm thinking five, can you even afford to buy good earrings? Five pairs. No, they can't. He's saying they can't. You can't. I'm lazy. Gold is expensive. Diamond is expensive. What you put on is fake. Why don't you just have one? And you look beautiful. I'm not, that is me, because I have one. If you have two, can have two, but make sure that you are neat. You're looking like a temple. When people look at you, they are seeing a sanctuary. Can you look at how the sanctuary looks nice, even from outside? Do you think people can say, wow, look at her. She looks good. Know that she looks weird. Are you able to control your makeup? And you know it is time now to say no to foundation. So that my, whatever, these ones, can look the same as my skin. Are you able to control your makeup? Are you able to do it? Please do it. Because that body belongs to who? To God. It is his. He says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully. So even when you scare people, it is okay. Right? It is okay. It is okay. Even when you scare people, it is okay. You don't have to smile at the right time. You don't have to walk. By the way, I don't walk like this. If I walk like this, I will fall. Pastor, if you see me walk like that, just tell me, Pastor Carol, 
That is not you. Just walk the way you like walking. Because I am under no pressure to do it. I am pleasing my God. You are wonderfully made the way you are. Even if you don't have earrings, even you do, you do not have a nice, smooth face, it is okay. You are created in his image. You are good to look at. There is a man who is saying, I want a girl who has no makeup at all. And why you are failing? Oh yes, yeah, clap, men clap. Yes, I know that's what they are saying. The men are saying, I want a girl who has no makeup at all. Maybe why you are missing. If there are those ones who are missing their appointment, it is because when the man was waiting for you, you came looking like who? We can see him. We know it is him. He is dark. But the face, there is a mask. There is a mask on it. Please don't do that, children of God. The way you are, we like you that way. We appreciate you that way. Don't borrow a wig from a friend. That week circulates from one estate to the other. From base to Sheraton. From uko. Is it circulate gedurai? Inafika gedurai? That's a iko. Unasema na ile kab... No, it's okay. You are here the way it is. Tukchukua aremis paka. Paka. Chukua aremis paka. By the way, watoto wangu wanapakanga aremis. Yeah, you see that nice hair? Yes, you don't need to... It is okay. Wanapakanga aremis ya ngombe. Kama... If Marembis can treat the cows, it can treat me better, right? Yes. No borrowed things. No borrowing things. No borrowing things. Don't borrow. Eh? Stay the way you are. You clean that dress on Saturday for Sunday and you still have it on Tuesday. It is okay. It is okay. We appreciate you the way you are. Because every time you keep on borrowing, you are borrowing from this altar to the other. And you never know which altar is going to harm you. Because this body must be taken care of. This body is not for satanic activities. This body it is meant for him and for him alone. And he knew that. And also the devil knows that. Do you know how he knows that? The devil knows. For him to operate, he needs a body. Did you know that? For the devil to operate, he needs a body. But whose body are you? God's. So, shetani anapata wapi mwili na hana mwili hata kidoko. It is us who allow him to use the body, the temple of God. So, we should not allow Satan to ever touch our bodies because this belongs to God. So, if Satan wants to further his agenda, let him go and create his on. But you, you belong to who? Say, I belong to God. I belong to Christ. My body is for him. Hallelujah. So this body, you will take care of it because 1 Corinthians 4.2 says, moreover it is required in stewards that no one be found no, but that one be found faithful. Moreover it is required in steward that one be found faithful. Who are you? You're the temple. What work do you have? You are a steward. You're taking care of the body of Christ. You are the temple. You are taking care of it. So you are required to be what? To be found faithful. Is what you are eating look, does it look like faithfulness? When you eat junk, because let's, let's talk about it. Don't we, like, don't we like KFC? We like it. We like it. Which other one do you like? Galitos? Subway? Mama Njoro? Back McDonald? Mama Njoro? Hakuna kitu kama yo. Mama Njoro ana kitu kama yo. McDonald? Actually, I knew, I knew I had grown old. One day, when I was looking for food, and I went near a subway and there was a long queue. I just told my husband, this is not ours. If we dare stand there, we will be stoned. Otherwise, this one has already been taken by the younger generation. But I, I ask you, I'm not saying to indulge in such a thing 
in chips. What else do you buy from there? Chicken, pizza, burgers, whatever. It is not bad. But it cannot be that you're feeding on junk and you expect yourself to stay healthy and expect the temper of God to stay healthy. No, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about spiritual taking care. I'm talking about physical taking care of the body because we must do it. You can't be told that your weight is on the borderline and you are still going to buy KFC. You must take care of that body. Do you think God is pleased when you feed that body with junk? Do you think he's pleased? He's not pleased when you feed that body with junk because he knows after you have fed that body with junk, what is going to happen? You are going to add on weight. You are going to be overweight. And now when we tell you it is time to dance for the Lord, what will happen? We'll have to take you to the hospital because the way, the way you are behaving, you need a cardiologist. Just because you never took care of your body. Young people, take care of your body. Let us not be found with cholesterol in our bodies. That body is the body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I, I'm sure you are thinking, I'll, I'm going to tell you very spiritual things. No, I said let us take care of the body. Because we are taking care of the souls. Every day in this church, every evening, there is somebody preaching here, taking care of the soul. So I want you to take care of that body. It should not be given any junk. What are you supposed to be hearing on your phone? If it is not godly, if it is not godly, do not listen because you are putting junk into the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. What kind of friends do you have and what do they tell you even on social media? What do they tell you? What do they tell you? Yeah, it's you, I'm asking. They greet you after greeting you. Stories like, stupid things, she said. They tell you stupid things. Is your body meant for stupidity? Is your body meant for foolishness? Is your body meant for any filth? Young people, I want us to listen and listen very carefully. At times, tunakwanga na mchezo, na hiyo mchezo isha zidi kipimo. Tunajua hivo. Do not allow people to tell you anything and whatever they like. Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do you hear me? If that girl is telling you sweet nothings, tell her off, I block you. I have the power. Who controls the account? It's you. Is this not you? You control it. You can come out. You can left. You can left. You can left. Eh? You can left. You can do lefting. Yes, please leave. Why? Because this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and God wants you to take care of it. Young men, when you open that phone and it has an app that keeps on bringing nasty pictures, nasty videos, what do you do with it? Do you still check? By the way, by the time you are doing it the second, third time, what did we say? Your brain creates some neural pathways and now you begin to crave and you begin to remember what you saw. The minute it pops, kill it. Because very soon, you're going to begin to put junk into the temple of the Holy Spirit and God is going to be mad. Let me tell you, let me, let me just tell you something. If you, are, you have that phone and you normally use it in your bedroom. Are you comfortable if your mother and father can come and join you as you watch whatever you're watching? Yes. Some of us. But not all of us. Can you allow me to come right now if you have a phone? Can you allow me to open for me? And I check what you've been doing? Yes, you're confident. That is a church we want today. 
That is a church we want. If you are not confident, please, after today, go and delete every app. Let me tell you, the people that create apps, they create apps and they have one intention, that my app is going to have many people look, have, look at it or subscribe to it. Did you know that? The creators of apps, it is not just for beauty. It is that that app, it is going to have many, many people than your app. So that nasty app, that app that has ungodly content, it is meant to keep you for the rest of your days. To keep you looking at it and guess what is going to happen. You'll have formed a habit and later we are going to see the fruits of what you have been looking at. Some of you, it is not that you want to, you, you began being rude. You are born rude. No, but you are rude because the conversations you are having on your phone are all vulgar. It's vulgar. Eh? All those words. You are friends. On WhatsApp, you have the key. You have the key to your social media accounts. You have the key. Why? You will say, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit doesn't like this, if God himself doesn't like this, I too will not like it. Because whose are you? God's. You belong to God. So can we begin to make, to change our habits? And our habits can be changed. Our habits can be changed. What are the habits that we are going to have? No, instead of having useless talks, we are going to have Bible, the scriptures. We are going to have, I'm sure the youth pastor sends you a lot of scriptures and a lot of articles and a lot of links. That is what you are going to be studying. This old as I am, I'm in school. And my school is online. And I can tell you, I can spend 24 hours reading. Not WhatsApps, not Facebook accounts, but reading and studying the word of God. Why? I thought it was not possible. I began to train myself that I can do 24 hours and not get tired and not feel bold. Actually, what is making me stop is because I need to give my body a rest. You can form a good habit. Good habits can be formed. So from today, young people, you're going to form good habits. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I pray that today you will present your bodies to God as living sacrifices. These things that we are telling you today, and you were told yesterday, and you will be told up to Sunday. Is it up to Sunday? Don't get familiar with them. Please practice. Do something different. You can form new habits. It is possible to form them. It is possible to maintain them. Your body has taken a shape which is as a result of your habits. If you feed on spinach, I tried. My husband is here, he can tell you. I tried to feed on spinach. I can say to feed on spinach, vegetables, especially spinach. But when I try to put on something else into my system, it starts rejecting. Because I've begun to form a habit of eating healthy and vegetables. If you form a habit of every time you open your phone, you go to check what your pastor was saying, you will always find yourself actually asking Pasile or Hukupo, Hukupost, or in your group, you, the person was supposed to post something on your group, you will actually remind them, John, today you did not post the word of the day. Kindly post. Because what you are craving for, it is now godliness. Because you have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. So today, let us begin to think. Let us begin to act like a people who belong to God. We are going to do and we are going to give our bodies what God wants us to give our bodies. You are going to be a righteous person. You are going to be a holy person because of what you have been putting into your body. As much as we want you to be holy and righteous, if you are putting the opposite of that, you will never be holy. Did you know that? You will never be holy. Even if you sing a holy, a holy spirit song right here and you say, holy 
and whatever you have been putting inside of your body between Monday to Saturday is not holiness. Holiness will never be seen in your life. So we must practice. We must give our bodies that which is right so that we can become what God wants us to become. Young girls, your body is not for everyone to be touching you, right? Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry who? Sorry who? I ask who? Man, where were you going? Where were you going before you touched me? Did you see me? Can you apologize? I ask people to apologize because I belong to somebody. I belong to God and I belong to him too. So nobody ought to treat me. Nobody ought to treat me like their own property. Right? You're not somebody's property. You're God's property. Yes. Ati, they, they keep on touching you. Ibusi, mama. Everybody comes. Ati, akitoka na huko. Unaito nani? Isi? Sindela. Sindela. Now, at every boy comes at because you used to school with him. Oh, hi. It's been long. You have been well. Whose body? Eh, eh, book, where have you been? I need to know whether we have been the same place. We have been in the same place of holiness. We have been seeking the Lord. Because when they touch you like this, they don't leave you the same. Oh, they don't leave you the same. They have come with dirty hands. They have been touching other girls. They have come with their immoralities. Sooner or later, you begin to feel something for him. It is not because he was handsome. It's just because you allowed him to touch your body. Yes. Keep pure. Keep holy. Keep pure. Keep holy. Young men. Ebukam. Anito karaoke. Jackson. Jackson. These girls, not here. They are not here. These are good girls here. These are right, right, righteous girls here. They are good. They are going to heaven. Hallelujah. Yes. They are the properties of God. Now, Jackson. Ati, tuschana, wakitaka kutis, a man. You are the right candidate of being teased. So they come. <laughs> Sasa, Jack. <laughs> Sasa, how are you? No. Tell them, at your, ooh, do I look like a weakling? Do, do I look like a weakling? I am a man. I know what to do. When I want a girl, I shall come and tell you. Yes. They should never, never joke with you. They should never, never joke with you. Why? Now you know what you carry. You carry godliness. When you look at yourself, look at your legs, even if it's okay. Even if when the shoe... You know some of us, the shoe shapes us. Otherwise, if you're given a shapeless shoe, the fingers go all over. You look at your leg and you say, this leg is made for God. For what? I shall jump. I shall walk. I shall go for missions with these legs. I shall walk. I shall be the best that there ever was in my generation. Because I know who I am. Do you know who you are? Give yourself some value. Hallelujah. You, I told you an investment. How much are you worth? Give yourself that value because he has already said it. I made you with my very own image. Do you give God value? Give your body value. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he sustain you. May he enable you to walk a walk that is right. May he enable you to treat your body like a temple. That temple appreciates worship. That temple appreciates the word of God. That temple appreciates goodness. That temple appreciates the joy of the Lord. You, maybe you are not able even to perform well in school or to perform well at home because something in your body is not letting you do so. Because you have been watching the wrong things. You have been having the wrong company. You have been walking with the wrong people. The people every time they speak discouragement to you. No one should ever speak discouragement to you. Hallelujah. Nobody should ever tell you you will never make it. You will make it. No one should ever tell you that you, you are ugly. It's okay. I am fearfully made but I please my God. Nobody should ever whisper in 
anything that does not look like God into your life. Hallelujah. You look like God, you belong to God, and God is pleased with whatever he made. When he looked at you, he said, you are marvelous. You look great and you look good. Therefore, we are not going to, to take dawas to slim. Yeah. So that we can fit in that dress. So that we can go for that catwalk. It is okay. In Kenya, we have ply size models. Yes, we have. And you are accepted. In the church of Jesus Christ, we require you as you are because we know you are a vessel of use and a vessel of honor. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you as you go back home, as you go to your studies, wherever you go, know that I look like God. I look like Christ. I am his business and nobody else's business. Therefore, I mind about him and I mind about his opinion rather than the opinion of men. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, make some noise. Celebrate Jesus for Pastor Carol.